خاص طور جب فقط واقع و یوفتن جاوی دید این ساغی زفایج لوی که او یوفتن جاوی نانیه پر نول غدو دو میو همون جون غیزاگ سیزی تیپو مین میو غاوی دغف غیزاگ او غنسات سنر فزونیس فدو ممی ایریو تفارا نر تفاراج تفار داویل او فود فریزا جمیشا شالی نو انتن سی ایزو زید بلو جازی دل اوکن Pésifat le nul fan uvner du volet pas on tse. Zuzi na duzu tse no l'on tse. Azu fan suuk fi fan gush ve yon tse uchiae. Fan kerf fan guzet pap na tal ökan. Jurat shtab pa zu fan buzu fad van tse. I far opoden far anpak far filet ka far esprit. U da reve zu ve don ve fan yad nal fri nan tse. Azu fan le nul pa jom. Fan iru far ökan zi shon ya zeti. Sureza fan darale i fa janiale zeten, suzit swa par va fa kukur nan tun. Dwa ro paze fa sun zit galit as va han frezak. En sit sep fa godot fa un nan at han frezeten. Suzit swa fa gali fa gauzu a ou jat fun. I paze fa nanus fa ou tsena fi u fuzi. So for some introductory housekeeping, within the context of my ongoing world building project, I have, for the first time, created a conline. It is far from perfect, I know that. I've only been working on it for a few months, but my main goals were for it to be functionally naturalistic and to have an intuitive dimension system, and I think I reached those, or at least I hope. Limzani is a language that was originally an ox slang created over 900 years ago before the poisoning. It's not known who the original creator was, and for the first few years of its existence it was barely ever used. Think like... Esperanto or Edo right now, but after the poisoning, it was dug up by northern Paranwan people who all spoke different languages but needed a way to communicate in order to share their limited resources. Over time, as things stabilized and people moved to different places, Limzani naturally declined into new languages, Urken being one of them. Two things worth noting about Urken's phonology. Firstly, this is a very Germanic and slightly French inventory because for my first conlang I wanted to keep to sounds and grammatical concepts that I was already familiar with, namely those of French, English, and German, so that's going to be a recurring theme. And secondly, the romanization system contains two digraphs, SH for the voiceless post alveolar fricative and CH for the velar fricative, that can also be written using an S caron and an X respectively. This is because the digraphs are easier to type and feel more intuitive when reading, but I needed each sound to be able to be written with a single character so that you could type with the Limzani script, which I made a font for. Syllables are formed with a vowel that can be followed or preceded by up to three consonants, and any consonant can be part of a coda. Emphasis falls on the penultimate vowel, except for affixes, and word initial vowels that aren't stressed are lost. I should also say that there is a southern Urken accent spoken in about this part of the country. Its most noticeable differences with standard Urken are a minor vowel shift, loss of the H, loss of the voiceless plosives, and loss of the rhotic when following a vowel and lengthening of said vowel. I will be pronouncing things the standard way for the rest of the video. Urken uses verb final and otherwise pre-word order, it doesn't use grammatical gender or noun classes, and it doesn't have articles. It has three numbers and four cases that are marked through highly regular prefixes. Verbs in Urken fall into one of two categories, those that end in N and those that end in A. Urken's tenses are present, perfect, pluperfect, imperfect, future and future perfect, each formed with suffixes that used to be auxiliaries, and it uses subject-verb agreement. When conjugated for the second and third person singular, verbs not only take a suffix, but the last vowel that came in the syllable before the verb ending also gets fronted. For example, Japnan, which means to breathe, conjugated for the third person singular present becomes Japnid, and Norait, which means to feel or to touch, becomes Norait. Interrogatives can be formed by placing the cleft César, meaning it is, at the beginning of the sentence, similarly to how French's esque works, or just through rising intonation as well. Urchin uses reduplication, which works by repeating the first syllable to say that an action is repeated, 
that a noun is broadened or greater in number or to emphasize an adjective. This can be used to turn bad into terrible, to turn animals into a lot of animals, family into community, think into remember, etc. etc. Words can easily be created in Urkin by using a combination of affixes to turn a word to a different part of speech. For example, for nominalization, there are two gerunds, one created with the suffix ve, which means an instance of the verb happening, turning ehan, which means to know or to be able to, into ehve, which means knowledge or ability. The second one is created with the suffix ri, which refers to an extended or perpetual state of doing the verb, giving us ehri, which can be translated into mastery of the skill. There are also adjectivation and adverbation affixes uh, with a derogatory and complementary distinction and augmentative and diminutive prefixes that are mainly used affectionately and have a similar effect to Italian ino and one. Worth noting that these are all commonly used in casual conversation but not so much in writing and formal situations. The Urkin like to talk about what they eat and how they feel and are for the most part very content with their routine. And being the biggest color makers in the world, they have the eye for art and aesthetics. As such, they have a wildly elaborate inventory of words for food, mental and emotional states, and color, with the most of the words related to machinery and sciences being loaned from their neighbors to the southeast, the Tsoime or Toime, who are much better at that kind of thing. This is also reflected in their idioms and expressions. A common urchin expression is hated. Literally, it is pouring red, implying it's pouring like wine, so it's raining heavily. Nupak Juthun, which literally means to look for glue, means to take on an arduous task that will most likely force one to go far away because glue is one of the hardest pigments to make. Nihu Gopfen, literally to eat the cheese, this one's my favorite, means to go through things as usual or routinely. And a way to ask how someone is doing is andax, literally, do you rest? You get the picture. That's all for the Solari of Urken at this stage. There's still a ton to be done world building wise. This language is far from perfect and uh, I have a few others to make among many other things, but I'll post about the progress I make over time. That's it. Thank you for watching.